The following is a fictitious episode in the lives of two make-believe hobos. The characters and events you hear are not real. Don't freak out. Welcome to my star. It's so far from the planet we rotate. We turn in circles. We love to light up your day. I'm the queen of the cosmos. My name is Sean. It's not a great name, but I was made to relive this day every day. These two weird hobos that I picked up in my galactic camper van. It's so creative that my my friends came up with this idea. Wow, we're flying through the cosmos. Now I'm gonna drop you off because I hate your beatboxing is garbage. Sean, see you, you later. Said, no, 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 no. Ouch. Oh, ass. Oh. We're back in a box car. Oh, this is this one we've used before? Oh God, my ass! You know, Sean. this reminds me of that one time. Remember that alien dude that kicked the like picked us up? Yeah, it's just like the same scenario. Oh my God, Queen of the Cosmos, eat a dick, dude. That is so mean. He said he was gonna bring us all the way to Cheesies. Didn't he say he would drop us off at Cheesies? He was gonna, ta- he so was gonna take us to the end of the galaxy for the world's greatest diner. And then uh, Sean was just like, no. Damn it. I, t- I described... I'm the queen of the cosmos and I'll do whatever I want. Sid- d- didn't I describe to Sean what we did for the opening of the of the show? Didn't I say there was going to be some beatboxing involved. He seemed cool with it. He didn't seem to enjoy it. Yeah, no. That was no, that was clearly the switch it that seems, got us It booted seems out. like he's the type of guy who's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And then as soon as it starts, he goes, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. Hyper stop, flake. Stop, 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 Right. Stop. Right. That's what happened. And he started, he put his hands, put his hands right on my light window. See, I've got the smudge now. I've got the fingerprint smudges over that. I'm going to have I mean, to, it's very sparkly. It's, I'm, it's I'm like his to. fingers are made of like... Glitter. Ooh. Yeah, and it's not really coming off anyway. I'm gonna need some actual like substance on there. It's kind of a cool little shadow, isn't it? Like a nice little projection. Well, of how the... about this? How about we adjust the new hand and oh, get it rotating? Yeah. Oh, 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 that feels the vibration. Ooh, that was fun. Yeah, wasn't it? Pleasurable. Pleasurable. Uh, I love having two hands again. I like that you have two hands as well. It's I have had to kind of support. I mean, it's you gotten to the point the where like very I'm, little. I'm looking at my right hand now, and I'm like, what a fucking disgrace next next to your hd updated left hand for sure the uh the hodgepodge mixed together like toaster arm over there is doesn't look great it it i it had functional. to it i used a car okay i, I had to use mainly car parts i know no it's like you know it's like anything when you look back at any technology that when you know when you when you Put up the tube TVs up against, you know, the curved, sleek, flat ones we've got now. They don't, they don't look good. No one wants to use a CRT anymore. No, it's uh, no, we're, we don't care about, we don't need it to be crash ready. Okay. Yeah. We don't need to be crash team ready. I've got 10 TVs in my fucking house and I want them all to be sleek, wall mounted, flat, no tubes. Mm -hmm. That's the way of it. I like my TVs curved. Yeah. Like my women. Horseshoes. Like my women. You like your women with horseshoes. You, you, you like your women to have a, a nice indent to them? Yeah. I like horseshoes. I, 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 I like that. Chicks. I like the sides of them to be sticking out and then the middle parts of them to be really indented. I like to, I like a, a nice mane on them that I can braid and then ride it. <laughs> I, made, I made my wife look like a horseshoe when I drove real fast into a light pole. And we bent around a tree and I left her there. It's I left up. her there for 12 hours and all of a sudden she had a perfect curve to her. I took a picture and I left. Then I did it too. So then when we press bodies to together, we make a big circle. Yes. A Venn diagram. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice southern way of uh, of getting into a relationship. It's, I'm glad in their relationship that he was you know, willing to make the sacrifice to also become a mm-hmm. horseshoe. Yeah. It's important to share you know, the deep connections with your significant others. Also share pain. That's anguish. crucial. That's crucial. Because mm-hmm. if you don't share it, how are you possibly supposed to relate? 
Exactly. You're, you're not. You're not supposed no, to. No, you're and then, never going to understand. And your marriage is going to fall apart. You're just, just going to like stand around going like, well, I'm sorry that I'm not indented. Right. Exactly. And that's why, like, you know, when, when women get pregnant, like, guys, you have to simulate that pregnancy, too. It's just the way of it. You have to go to, an, you have to, go to a hospital and you have to get manufactured all the same symptoms. If a horseshoe person gets impregnated... How does that work? Does Ooh. that just cause their body to re stick out? I don't know. It's like, you know, like taking care of a car dent. You put one of those little suction cup things, and then as soon as you give it a nice little pull, just thunk, and it looks good again. I wonder, I wonder how many normal looking women out there are really former horseshoe women that have just given birth. Who knows? These are the questions that we, the boxcar buddies, endeavor to answer. Yes, the next time you meet a horseshoe person, make sure to to stop them in public very loudly, probably with your phone open, mm-hmm. probably videotaping, uploading to some website, right. possibly a popular streaming website that I will not say right now. Right, don't. Because I mean, there's probably only one that you really use. Possibly. Let's be real. Yeah. And then videotape it and go, Hi, Don and Greg told me to do this. Are you pregnant? Send send all your videos to goodgoodgregslist at gmail.com. Yep, do that. Yeah, do that. Uh, yeah. And yeah, you can also just do what everyone does with seemingly pregnant people and just approach and put your hand on the stomach and go, oh, how long? When are you due? And and See not even goes. asking. No. Not even asking. Just Don't be straight sure. up. Just like do the, the Miles Morales like hand on the shoulder. Yeah. You're pregnant. <laughs> but <laughs> do, do it, it on a tongue. On the gut. Yeah. Put like, it right re- on the Like really just slap it. Hey. You pregnant? You preggers? Yeah, and so that's what we do. Uh, but anyway, though, hi, uh, I am uh, I'm Don. I'm an embarrassment, <laughs> and we are the we are the boxcar buddies. That is uh, that is Greg, my buddy, and we meet uh, every every week and talk about some content because what the hell else are we doing? Greg and I are two homeless dudes around Chicago. We do not have regular employment, nor do we have regular residences. We got a go lot to. of fucking free time on our hands, so so much. We usually spend it by you know looking through windows and checking out. Whatever is on the TV, belching in public, you mm-hmm. know, following one of our random friends who have really dumb voices that sound kind of similar to Don and myself, but you can't really tell who is who. Yeah. It's weird because sometimes Don has friends that sound like me and vice versa, but then I have friends that I can impersonate perfectly. It's odd. Yeah. No, it's 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 a strange life that we lead, and uh, we're kind of boxed in uh, by these Box rules. Boxed card in. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I got a little sick from that. You got a little you got a little embarrassed from that it from was, that haha moment. But it was but it's nice. Haha moments are really nice and 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 haha moments and sort of feelsy moments. Those are the things Greg and I Something chase. Something that make your heart light up. Yeah, like a Christmas tree. Yeah, like or mine. Don's nipples. Like mine. The human headlight. Uh-huh. Which is great because again, that's neither, what a stripper name is. Human headlight. Yeah. That's right. And uh you know, I haven't really been asked back to any of the clubs. Yeah, no shit, I've because danced. the last time you did a pole dance, you shone your light into four pedestrians. I know. And the light was so bright that it broke through the tinted windows. I didn't realize blinded that. Blinded a guy in his Porsche, which proceeded to drive down Lakeshore Drive and get into a multiple car accident. Tell me that Porsche drivers don't deserve that fate. You tell me that every Porsche driver doesn't deserve. Sometimes to, to get Porsche that. drivers are just people who ended up getting a lot of money, and then they're like, "Oh my god, I, 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 what first car? What first car? Porsche, right? This is just a Porsche, Porsche. right? I, 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 this is the one." Maybe they were like flipping through a luxury car magazine and was just like, "Uh, this one," and then they blindly put a finger on it and exactly. then it ended up being Porsche. Yeah, you're I mean, right, I do right. the same thing. Whenever I get my hands on money, I get like twenty dollars and like, "Oh, what would you like from our restaurant?" Uh, 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 ice cream. You do end up on ice cream a lot, though. You really do. I just think it's interesting that you're, you say your eyes are closed and you, and you end up picking ice cream a lot of the time. I mean, ice cream is good. Coincidence. I'm a lactose intolerant, so I don't get down on ice cream without consequences. A.K.A. Don is a big bitch lord. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm super tolerant for the most part, but I do not tolerate lactose. So. Just intolerant yes. of other people's cultures. And ice cream. And the Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> the Dutch... 
yeah, they're fucked up, okay? They talk in strange ways. I have no interest in, in associating with them. But that's those are some of the stories. Uh, we, we chase better ones, but those are some of the examples of stories that Greg and I do like to chase uh, when we're seeking to escape from the cruddy, barnacle-encrusted story that is our lives. From the claws of reality, mm-hmm. weighing us down mm-hmm. with its big black feathers. That's right, yeah. Coming to pick at our corpses, which is what black feathered creatures do and I think. pick out our eyeballs probably screech a couple times too going ah! most likely most likely uh but anyway though uh in the spirit of continuing our you know typical discussions i did absorb some content uh last <gasps> what week. did you absorb well uh so i went to i went back to stoney's our friend the stony island feeder uh i went back to his domain which is as we know is in this Met- metallic dome uh, a li- just off of the uh, Dan Ryan it's Expressway. It's like a Donkey Kong hut made of metal. Yes, and it's it's melded together. It was welded by God knows who, probably several different people, but it's like a collection of manhole covers and street signs and any and just anything metallic and all melted together in a big even, dome. Even better of a description, it's the Animaniacs water tower yeah. for this disgusting, weird-ass Scottish guy. Mm-hmm. And he has a lot of friends that you might be surprised to hear are even lower class than Greg and myself. That's they are true. Definitely bottom of the barrel of humanity. Like, where in the world did you come from, man? Those are the kind of people that find their way to Stoney's uh, domain. But as I said, they do that because Stoney's good and he gives a meal to. Uh, the majority of the people that come through. If you're hungry like we are and stuff, you have to trade some random stuff. I mean, Stoney's uh, parameters for what he accepts are pretty varied. You know, I, there's no telling why like he wants... Ball gags, like putting ball gags into dudes. When, used. Uh, he, he'll always take a used ball gag, which he's the only person I know who will do that. But uh, Never cleans it. That's part of the punishment. Traffic cones. He's big into traffic cones. Uh, vests. He's really liking vests now, so that's what like I trade. Like straight in. jacket vests, like no, uh, like leather specifically, leather vests. Uh. Yeah, he's always, so I, I found a couple of those, um, patchy, you know, and torn in areas, but he still took them. I think Probably covered just, in patches too. Yes, like it, like a TGI Fridays kind of vest. Yeah, it was some flair. It was definitely some flair to to those vests, individualized. It's a spicy vest. Mm-hmm. It you can almost still smell the blooming onions on on the thing. It was you can smell those those uh, steak fajitas and that Jack Daniel's barbecue sauce <laughs> and that shitty watered down cocktail that came. To Today's this. episode has been brought to you by TGI Fridays. Make sure to get some loaded baked potatoes inside your fat, disgusting body. Right, and remind yourself to go somewhere better next time you're out to eat. Make sure to eat somewhere decent. <laughs> Unlike TGI Fridays. Spend the money if you want your relationship to last. Because every day here is a mistake. That's right. Thank God we left. That's really, that should be the motto. Thank God we made it out of there. Until Guy Fieri comes up to your home, bangs on your door going, Hey guys, you want to try my fajitas? Come to Flavortown with me! That he force feeds you a disgusting, disgusting, like, refried foods. Yeah, just keeps you as a hostage in your own home for like four days. and just Much like Stoney. Mm-hmm. Stoney does that too, in in his own home. Uh, once you go there, f- in exchange for the food, there's no telling what you're going to have to do or how long you're going to have to stay. I myself was there for three days this time, but I also have somewhat of a rapport with Stoney. Jesus. So I, I went there and... Um, I went with the uh, disgusting friend I have, Charles, Chucky, the the guy off oh, the... Snotty ninja. Snotty ninja, who is very quiet and really does... He does come across some very interesting items because he spent so much time on the docks and the ports, like in Lake Michigan. And so he, he just cleans up, like, the ocean like that. So he comes across a lot of stuff, and I've introduced him and Stoney. And um, I I brought him along with me because Stoney, like, kind of likes the dude for whatever reason. And uh, Stoney oh. likes anybody that ain't me. Yeah, well, that's that's also true. Jesus Christ, Chucky! Oh my! Don't God! Don't sneak up, man! I fucking told you. I said I'd invite you, but I said announce your presence too. We got to get a bell on this, dude. Uh, this, uh, you know, the bell thing, it's not really for me, you understand? I just wanted to come in and say hello to you fellas, okay? For someone who is so snotty, you breathe so quietly. 
Uh, I learned how to do it. You know, my Stop mom, talking, my please. Mom told me Stop. I'm the table. She Stop it. To do it. Yeah, Just that's better. Stop. Greg, yeah, keep your, your hand over that mouth. Anyway, though, uh, and disattach the hand. There. Engage grip mode. Okay, great. Thank you. Anyway, Chucky, uh, he came here because I, I brought him with me to Stoney's, and we, um, we watched the movie that I'm going to tell you about together uh, after... Uh, they these two exchanged some items. Mm-hmm. Um, we all sat down. Stony made some hamburger helper, um, which you know I'm not gonna complain about it. Hamburger, it's it's okay. It's fine. It's food takes it, up space. It's every uh, stay at home parents go to meal. Absolutely, it's in a box. It only takes like ten minutes. Or to single dad, right? Specifically, specifically. Sure. Ham- they, I don't know why hamburger helper doesn't lean into that market. You know what I mean? Like just advertise. You know, listen, the wife took the kids. Well, how about you take a box of hamburger helper with you? Life's got you down. Hamburger, help yourself up. Make, it will help the pain go away for only a few minutes. Don't forget the leftovers. Right, right. And return with a vengeance later when you get to the bathroom. But anyway, though, so we're, do we, you like cheese? Single dad? <laughs> Well, cheese is going to be bleeding out of your orifices, Well, sir. Jesus Christ, can I tell you about <laughs> our new chicken Alfredo? The uh, fucking, like, glove is hovering over a dad right. in the bedroom by himself. <laughs> don't cry. Just eat hamburger helper. Right, right. No, no, seriously. Don't cry. Don't cry. And then just muffles his mouth. Kind of like uh, like what Chucky's got glove, going on over the here. The glove gives him a little kiss. Yeah. It's okay. I'm here. I'm here for you now. And then things and then get it's, really intimate And then the it glove. slips slowly below the camera screen and uh, cut to black. Turns out this dad just went crazy and started fucking his gloves. And force feeding his kids hamburger helper every week. But yeah. Every other weekend? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, because that's what he's allowed to do. Exactly. Court, <laughs> su- court, court supervised hamburger helper dinners. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, though, uh, what we watched at, at Scummy or at Sony's rather was um, A Star is Born. That's the movie that uh, that Stoney had acquired. Is that Some, that Lady Gaga movie? It is. Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper, and it's a movie that uh, we had some discussion post, uh, post-viewing, and I found out that uh, this is actually the fourth time the movie A Star is Born has been made. Wow. It was made twice between the 30s and the 50s, and then in the 70s, I believe, uh, with Barbara Streisand playing the role that Lady Gaga played. But, yep. So basically... The the premise of this movie, if if you know, if you don't know anything about it, if you haven't seen every other country <laughs> rock music movie, yes, exactly. Um, and as the you know the title sort of implies too, Bradley Cooper is this r- rocker, like a, a, a rock star, I guess. Not not really not really country. He's he's here rock star. Yeah, he's kind of he's he's toward the end of his career. He's been famous for a while. Kind of you get the sense that he's touring as like a. He's definitely not an up-and-comer. He's more sort of on the downslide uh, on the back end of his career. He's got his brother, who's played by Sam Elliott. He's like the guy who leads the crew that goes on tour with them. They all, you know, have been doing this before. And Bradley Cooper, the first shot in the movie is on stage, and Bradley Cooper has a handful of pills, and he pops them and drinks the end of a drink before going on stage to start a show. So the first shot in the movie, you're you're introduced to the character in a big way, which is this guy's this guy's an addict. This guy is a performer who clearly like needs to ingest some stuff to do what he to do what he does. And then at the end of his show, you know, you're, he gets into his car and there's a full bottle of like Jack Daniels or some such whiskey in the car, and he gets driven around whatever town he just performed in. And his driver's taking him around, and Bradley Cooper is just doing the, his, the character that he plays is totally this like grungy like. He he made his voice go low. I know everybody talked a lot about Bradley Cooper's like voice in the movie, and he's like, "Oh man, anywhere to drink around here?" And he does a lot of mumbling and th- he's that trying kind of real stuff. hard to keep Slurring. the voice low, but he, he has a hard time doing and, it. And so you he can has to and you mumble. can and you can tell that's exactly what it is. Is he clearly lo- he made an effort to make his voice low? And I wonder exactly where that came in. If it's because of past actors who played the role, or if interestingly enough, it's because his brother was played by Sam Elliott, who anyone who 
knows him knows he's got the lowest fucking voice of anybody. Sam Elliott, the 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 narrator from the you know uh, Big Lebowski, the guy in, in Ghost Rider. If you see that, the guy with the deep the for, fuck, the, 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 Coors, the, de- the the cowboy man, the Coors Light advertiser, the guy who just you hear that you hear that voice and it's like oh boy, the yeah. face of every parody conservative like. Facebook page that, ever. Yeah, yeah, that too. And he's got the famous mustache. He's Cowboy Man, like you said. He's got the famous mustache, the big bushy eyebrows, <laughs> right. the 10-inch penis. Dude. Yeah, but so anyway, uh, Brad, so Bradley Cooper's doing his voice jacket. thing. jacket. And, and basically, so... You you great uh, Bradley Cooper gets into the car. You see the full bottle, and then this then you're also you know the camera uh, cuts away, and you're also being introduced to Lady Gaga's character while sort of you know going back and forth between Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga plays Allie, and when you first meet Allie, she's leave she's at this she's a waitress in either like a hotel or a fancy restaurant, and she clearly doesn't like her job. She doesn't get along with her boss. You you're, that's communicated very clearly, but she does have. Have a friend in this job and after her shift she leaves to go perform at this drag club she they're on fridays at this club clearly like these men dress up as women and they go perform on stage they strip and they sing songs and it's a big rowdy like rambunctious atmosphere and it seems like a lot of fun but basically lady gaga goes in the back and she's getting ready and bradley cooper when you cut back to him in the car he's consumed the entire bottle of like whatever it was whatever and he's been driving around for like i don't know like 20 minutes like half an hour and he's just talking with his driver and the driver they're communicating and basically once the bottle's done bradley's like i gotta find somewhere to go get a drink and they they wind up outside this drag club and so he goes in there uh as he gets out of the car someone recognizes bradley cooper as you know whatever his name is jack something and so he's just like oh oh my god he like takes a selfie with him he's like dude and then you know he 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 starts selling bradley cooper on the drag club he's like come on in here and he's just like oh he's like he's like you might he's like i don't know if you'll like the the entertainment and bradley cooper's like uh he's like, can i get a drink and the guy's like yeah he's like that is my kind of place are you just you gonna reenact I mean? the whole movie for no, me? no 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 i mean i i, I could if, if you'd like i mean we got some time right yeah but let's just sit here and just go let minute me, by minute let me t- let me take you through the entire let me tell you the a story. star is born but but anyway anyway i guess just my point is that like so they meet in the drag club lady gaga sings her song bradley cooper and the whole club is moved because lady gaga has a, an incredible voice so she sings the thing she crushes it um afterward her and bradley cooper meet her friend was the guy who met cooper outside they talk and basically like that's where their relationship starts and they spend all night together you know they they're talking about different stuff she shares with him snacks they they do they go to some they got into some fight leaving the bar so they go into a grocery store and bradley cooper grabs like a a bag of frozen peas and just slaps it on her hand like drunkenly he's like you want to take care of that but so they do that then they're hanging out in the parking lot afterward she shares with him a song that she wrote and she says she doesn't sing her own songs bradley cooper invites her to his show the following night driver takes him away she goes back home um that kind of a thing the 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 movie starts out i I guess i wanted to go through that because the movie starts out nice it's it's a it's very hopeful you know bradley cooper even though he's you know you you get the sense he's he's an addict certainly but you also know that it's like well he's he's also a rock star he's living the rock star life kind of a thing and lady gaga is this talent who has you know no she's working at drag clubs and working as a waitress she's, yeah she's the nobody that's you know found by the talent yes yeah yeah oh she's got so, she's got something all right yeah she's really got this thing she's going got on. moxie but uh so she yeah. also has pills <laughs> give me those pills but uh did bradley cooper scream that at some point in the movie <laughs> Give me pills. <laughs> Just screaming real loud. You- I'm a drug addict. That's my character. Because <laughs> this wish- movie, I don't know, the way that you described it, this movie sounds mega, mega, like, predictable. It is predictable. You know where it's go. At least, speaking for myself, I don't know, and again, as I've mentioned, this is a movie that was originally written in the, the 30s, I believe. So if they haven't tweaked the structure of the narrative or they haven't it's played the same with the script, then then understandably, it is predictable because it's been like done that many times or whatever. But for speaking for myself, like I, I'm not familiar with those older movies, but I did still feel like you see where the movie's going the entire time. As, as soon as it hits this point about half an hour 
in. And and half an hour in is basically that now Bradley Cooper has finally brought Lady Gaga on stage at one of his shows. They sang one of her songs, and basically, like it, it went so well that someone else wants to represent Gaga. It, she gets a manager, and she launches her career. And now she has a separate career from the one that Bradley Cooper has. And you can immediately tell that like that doesn't sit well with like Bradley Cooper. You know, he was doing something She's for her. Mine. Yeah. She's mine. Kind of yeah, kind of th- that whole thing. And, I pull the leash around here. <laughs> right, right. And and so the movie goes on from there. But just kind of talking about it as a whole, Lady Gaga, she can she can sing. Everybody knows that. She That's blows true. she blows it away. She does gr- the parts of her singing in the movie are some of the best parts of the movie. They're the most evocative, like emotionally. You really do feel that stuff. Bradley Cooper, great actor. He also directed the movie, and that was his directorial debut. I have to say, for the most part, props to him. I think, uh, with the exception of minute details and little things, overall, very well directed. Um, but where the movie is is weaker. And, and also, for the record, Bradley Cooper can sing very well, too. That's another thing that came out of this is that, like, you know, I'm, I'm sure people maybe didn't know or whatever, but, like, it was, it, it seems to be a point of fascination for people that, oh, hey, like, look at Bradley Cooper. He can really My sing. My God, I can't believe this actor can <sighs> sing. Look at the talent just oozing out of that man. Actually, that's wrong of me to say because there are a lot of actors that who can't, can't, that not can't sing. sing. It's, it is a, it is a I mean, separate look at skill Danny set. DeVito when he tried to sing in Hercules. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's right. So or how right. about Gilbert Gottfried when he sang in Aladdin? Oh yeah, you're right. Thank That's you. That's right. Can you can, can shove you, can, me out? Can you bring us into that? How, how did that sound a little bit? It was. I can't remember the lyrics of it, but it was like one step for Iago. Oh, everyone hates me. Everyone wants to kill me. I am cool. I think that's perfectly accurate. I think if we were to do a side by side comparison, I think we would find. <laughs> I think we would find that exact song in. Uh, I think that was Return of Jafar, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, somewhere. that it. Well, we know that when uh, the the you know next time that Iago is really needed, that you know I can come fill in just in here. Case. You go there. You go. If you need someone dirt cheap that can do Iago, do it. I'm your twenty guy. bucks. Twenty bucks. So yes, Bradley Cooper can sing. Lady Gaga sings. It's musically. It's it's very nice. Um, also. Some nice performances by Andrew Dice Clay. I didn't even recognize that he was in the movie, but I, he plays, I think, Gaga's dad or um, or one of her dad's friends. Uh, I have to like go back and look for sure, but it's to the point where I didn't e- I didn't even know that was him until I saw his name in the end credits. So he did a very a very nice job because Dice Clay is such a character to disappear into a, a nobody is is impressive in itself. Dave Chappelle also is in one or two scenes. He plays Bradley Cooper's longtime friend. He and this is this is not Chappelle like fresh you know walking seemingly off of a comedy stage doing his normal Dave Chappelle thing. Him acting he actually again. acts and I have to say as he was a fine actor before and he's a fine actor now he's as i said he's only in two maybe three scenes and he does a fine job some of the exchange between him and bradley cooper is actually a nice heartfelt moment that's interesting that this movie is dave chappelle's acting comeback it was it was interesting i'm not really sure where the, where it was unexpected i mean when we when we think of dave chappelle's movie you know career we think of half baked blue streak blue streak put him on the noodles Air. think about chicken and beef that's all I think about. Which one? Con Air. Oh, of course. When he gets dropped from the fucking yes! airplane. Yes, and he's and he's got the 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 smiley face or the message written on his shirt. I forgot he's in Con Air. Con Air is a classic. It's a classic cinema. Nick Cage movie. Yes, it is with a wonderful accent by Nick Cage. So uh, check that one out too. But back to Star Is Born. Uh, Dave Chappelle does fine and all that. My problems with the movie are, are are minimal, and as I said, predictability is one of them. So if you're like me and you kind of get a sense of where something's heading and then you want it to get there, this movie gets a little tiresome about halfway through because you know sort of where it's heading. Yeah. Um, also, Bradley Cooper directed, as I mentioned, fine job, but because Lady Gaga is, again, established, she's a great singer, but in terms of acting, and she she also, I think she does everything necessary to hold her role's weight. She does enough to anchor the performance. But there are a couple of scenes, two specifically, um, that, that come to mind for me that are, they, they needed a strong performance because it's her and Bradley Cooper's characters really fighting. 
because there's the characters are actually conflicting. So there are two scenes that I'm thinking of where you kind of needed a strong performance from both sides. And Bradley Cooper holds up his end. He's fine. But they did something which I suspect was a, te- a tactic or a technique to make it easier on Lady Gaga, which was to go a little off script. It was more improv and them going back and forth to try and sort of coax the reaction that he wanted out of Lady Gaga. And for me, when I could tell that, that they were doing that and they were off script, it took me out of the whole thing. Right. So there are, there are a couple of scenes where they talk and it's a little, the, the weakness, I suppose, or the inexperience on Gaga's part, it, 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 to me at least, that kind of was obvious and it took me a little out of it. But... Um, I, I don't want to spoil it because it's a, it's a movie that if you haven't seen, I think you should. So I won't talk about where it ends and everything, but um, it, it is it is certainly evocative. It made me feel things, and it stuck with me afterward. Um, you know, I can say what I want to about, like I said, like the sort of little nitpicky stuff that were that wasn't great. But overall, in terms of a movie experience, in terms of a story with characters that make you that take you outside of yourself and kind of make some impressions and maybe make you learn something this movie accomplishes all of those things and at its core where it's as we said it's this superstar who discovers unknown talent and then brings it into the light and it blossoms and all that that's a nice narrative that's a nice tale that i think most people like feel something watching for and and the movie still holds true to that so it's it's definitely um it's definitely worth watching for that case. It's um, if you can catch it, it's still in theaters. I'm pretty sure. And if you can catch it, you know, on the smaller screen, it's worth that too. But Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga, A Star Is Born, 2018, worth your time. Need a Reno? Yeah, check it out. It's fun. Dang. Well, hello there, big handsome. Hi. What hey you- there. How's it going, guys? Freak, what brings you here? What's happening? Greg asked me to bring Chinese food. <gasps> oh my god, yes! yes! <laughs> no, Chucky, you cannot have any of those. I, uh, I do feel kind of bad. He can't really put anything in his mouth right now. Can you even taste anything like with that? With Not, not with the hand over your mouth. I know Stop that. Stop jamming food on my hand. <laughs> All right, retract hand. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I can finally breathe again. Yeah, I, I can't really taste too much, but I am hungry. I can t- let me just have an egg roll. Let me just have no. an egg roll. Oh, oh, oh. This hey, is mine. Stand back. Uh, Chucky, listen, I'm going to eat some stuff, and maybe I'll just I'll feed it to you like some scraps off Sorry, my plate like a dog. If I yeah. knew that there was a fourth person involved, I would have brought more food. It's not your fault, freak. It's We weren't expecting to necessarily have a fourth person. When the meal came, I didn't even know you were bringing food, and that's okay. Yeah, it's okay with me, too. Let me just get on some of this bourbon chicken here. I gotta just take that. Get out. Get off of my plate. What's Fucking that? weirdo. It's a mouth breather. It's a mouth breather. Yeah, I, yes, you. Listen, uh, you you go to the corner. Get <sighs> away from the mic. Disgusting. <laughs> go to the corner. Stay there right now. Freak. Pop a squat. There you go. All right, Actually, yeah. it's great that you're here because I was about to talk about the thing that we did this week. Oh, what'd you guys do? Oh, boy. What a fascinating tale. Now, Freak, I can never really tell when you're being sarcastic. I'm Is being it fascinating? sarcastic. Thank you. Okay, cool. So it wasn't Just make sure to scream sarcasm when you're, ha- you know, when you're saying something sarcastic. We, we need that from you, Freak. Fine. Sarcastically. Does that work for you? It does. It's like stage directions, but in real life. It's perfect. It's like listening to the the Elcor from uh, Mass Effect. Yes, right. The ones disappointed. Yeah, yeah. They yeah they speak they speak directions. In fact, freak. If we were Mass Effect races, you would definitely be an Elcor. You totally would. I don't know what Mass Effect is. It's a compliment. This is a compliment. I, I'm sure it is. Oh, I'm, just, I'm gonna eat some. I'm gonna eat some of the uh, b- b- broccoli and beef here. But uh, yeah, well, freak. How about you give a little rundown about what we did together? I wanted to reconnect with Greg because we have been having kind of a falling out for the last few months. So I invited him back to the free clinic. As long as he doesn't destroy our basements, he can stay. Nice. And I willfully accepted it. It's a nice arrangement. You promise no more wrestling, right? Uh, that depends if the killer whale comes. 
You keep talking about this guy, and I've never seen him. I say that all the time, freak. They're definitely the same I person. sneak him through the window. It's BS. Those rooms have bars on them. How do you... How? Because he's the world's fucking greatest one-armed wrestler. He just latches onto the bars and... Then, you know, I think... And I, then he bends it back when he's leaving. I think I read something interesting that the world's most famous one-armed wrestler now has two arms, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't know that. You really? know, he's on tour right now, so anything could be possible. Huh. I'm sure he probably disemboweled some guy's arm and just placed it on there and went, Yes, I am the killer whale! Ha -ha. You, you, think, you think so? That sounds very unlikely. I don't know, man. Well, either way, he's on tour anyway. Well, in any case... Because Freak and I were reconnecting, we thought the best way to reconnect our hearts would be to journey somewhere. Mm. Some vast worlds. Somewhere old, but new at the same time. Something charming. Mm. Unique. A little cringy. Shut up. <laughs> it's a, no, you set us up already, Freak. Thank you. Thank you for the food, though, by the way. In any case, Freak and I... Excuse we me. booted up his PlayStation, and we played some Kingdom Hearts 3. <gasps> oh, jeez. You okay? Yep. Oh. Here, allow me to assist. No, I already got it out. Whoa. I already got it out. <laughs> Whoa, he just used the spirit fingers. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. That feels pretty good, though. Do you feel better? Do you feel one with the cosmos now? I do. Yeah, thank you. This is nice. But do you can take the tendrils out of my uh, out of my chest? I think. I'm Fair gonna enough. Now. Okay. Ooh, thanks, man. I don't think we really ever explained how your spirit detective powers work, or the no. fact that you're also a doctor. Yeah. It's. I have to have multiple jobs, you know. Even as a doctor. Even as a doctor, it's a free clinic. Yeah, you're right. I'm not I guess really it is. making a whole lot of money. Understandable. It's basically charity. Yeah. Which we appreciate, by the way. Thanks for letting us go there. Myself, certainly. I've you are always welcome, Donald. Thank you. Greg, you're pushing it. Sarcasm. <laughs> nice. Nicely done. Yeah, he's good, catching good on. joke. So, how was Kingdom Thank Hearts you. 3? So, Kingdom Hearts 3, the latest in the Kingdom Hearts. Not even trilogy anymore. It's like quadrazillion. Yeah, game. yeah. What do you call it? an anthology? Is that what it is? Like with when it's just multiple chapters like that, and it's not you know a, a, it's more than a trilogy. Yeah, I think it's just series at this point. Okay, because it's not a trilogy. It's a series. Yeah, there's. I mean, how many games are there? Six. I want to say there's eight games. So there's God. one chain of memories. Two. Uh, uh, 300 something something over something days birth by sleep birth by sleep uh recoded dream drop distance three eight eight games my god there are so many fucking games Although, and dream drop distance is a dope name it's, it's a, a it's, name. it's a dope name yeah for probably the worst one so the game so the name is the best part of that game. the name is the best part of that game i i don't like any of the spinoff kingdom hearts games okay I like one and two. I like one because it, it's a cute, charming story. It's well-rounded. Combat is fun. It's not amazing. Right. Like, the platforming in that game fucking blows. The platforming is hard. A a aggravatingly so. Again, not hard because it's designed to be hard. Hard, it's hard because, because of it's flaws. Of poor game design. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it's also nicely coated thickly coated in some nostalgia so yes. that's that's what really appeals about kingdom hearts yeah and then two i think two has the best gameplay in the entire series it had with the final mix version out now on uh, ps4 or ps3 it's got so many extra bosses and extra challenges that make the game just so fun to play and actually challenging uh Two is like a big thumbs up for me, gameplay wise. But that was the beginning of the end. That's when things started becoming like, ugh, stop. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ugh, what? Why? Why are you complicating this? Right. They were just thirteen bad guys. Right. No, I don't want to know their we, real names. Right. 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 Exactly. I don't want to know that they have X's in their name because it's supposed to be an anagram of their normal person name. Stop. Uh, oh my gosh. I don't want to know their backstory. Stop. Right. I don't need to know that Axel's real name is Lee, but it's Lee at L-E-A. So it should be Leah. Leah. 
<laughs> or Leia, right? But it's pronounced Lee. What the fuck is happening? Here? Right. So I, I to that point, I've only played Kingdom Hearts one and two. I haven't played any of the spinoffs, and I'll tell you, you're better off. I know. I loved one, and I liked two a lot, but I was already lost, as you mentioned. Yep. When you only play one and two, I was already lost, and now. With as many games as came out between 2 and 3, I cannot imagine how complicated things have gotten. I would definitely say that Kingdom Hearts 3 is probably the most convoluted game I have ever played in my entire life. Oh my god. I, I expected holy, that. Holy shit. Like s- five games of exposition in between and it 2 never and 3. stops exposition in the game. It's ridiculous. It's aggravating. Right, right, right. You want Watching s- him play this game was agony. Oh, Freak, you didn't even get to play? I didn't want to. Uh, I was doing paperwork, and it was a mess. Yikes. Yeah, man, it doesn't sound good. It really, it really, it just sounds, as you said, what you want by the, by the resolution of, of anything, especially uh, supposed to be a trilogy, by the resolution. It's supposed to be the book end to the quote-unquote Xehanort series okay right right so but basically in any kind of trilogy the first and second there's exposition and there's plots that open up and rules are established and in the third you want the payoffs of all of those you want everything to be wrapped up with a nice bow however that happens but you want things to end you want storylines to end and you want plots to sort of continue and it it just doesn't sound to me like in three they do that it sounds like they keep opening new things Yes and no. That's the worst part. They they keep opening story shit uh, towards the end of the game, but they are haphazardly closing ones as well, and they're doing it so fucking poorly. So Ugh. the game starts out immediately after Dream Drop Distance. So here's here's the big kicker with Kingdom Hearts 3. You need to know the prior seven games before 3. You have to, or nothing will make sense. You will not be able to follow anything. I've played or watched the cutscenes of this this entire series because I wanted to play three real bad. Yeah, I played the last game in the series. I actually played to completion was Birth by Sleep. That game is really liked by Kingdom Hearts fans. I think that game is stinky. Yeah, I don't like it. It's not a good game. It's it was the beginning of the end for me. That was when they started bringing in... That's when they fully reveal who Xehanort is. The big bad guy. Yeah. And two brought up Xehanort. Like, this is the guy. Like, this is the true evil guy from the first game. That was his heartless. You're fighting his nobody. Which is when a normal person succumbs to darkness. Their heart turns into an evil thing. And their hollow body becomes another evil thing. Yeah. It's dumb whatever it was new things to fight in two the way that two worked was like like chain of memories built a bunch of shit and then kingdom hearts 2 ended it and that's why i was fine with two like two was convoluted but like at least it wrapped its shit up like here are 13 evil guys all you need to know is that they're evil and you kill them right that's it there's no such thing as consequence in this fucking series, and it drives me up a wall. Like, every single villain from 2 is back. And they're either brought back as normal humans, and they're using new names, and they have to constantly reference, Oh, hi, I'm Ienzo. I was formerly Zexion. Oh my god. And that shit is constant Here, here's the thing too it, like even after a cutscene happens of that happening he'll bring it up again towards the end of the game ah uh, look it's little zexion or you go by enzio these days and, and and what's goofy to me is that it's like it's so it's complicated enough that they do that re-explaining and reintroducing who somebody is and that's complicated for people of our age group and kingdom hearts obviously goes for a younger audience too it I goes c- for a younger audience but the problem is now kingdom hearts has been around for fucking 15 years yeah yeah so the target demographic of fucking kingdom hearts is adults yeah yeah but i still can't even imagine like because there are going to be younger kids that buy these games can you imagine trying to figure out that kind of convoluted narrative as a kid yep. jesus christ I, I had a hard enough time doing that with two but now think about like two came out 
when was that? 2006? My God. Two, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been 13 years since the last numbered game. It's crazy. But in those 13 years, there's been a shit ton of games, and they're not good. Right. In my opinion. Three, unfortunately, continues this trend. Oh, man. Uh, like, I had fun overall with the gameplay. I thought there were a lot of moments that made it more like Kingdom Hearts 1, which I was happy about. Like, yeah. Donald and Goofy have actual personalities. Sora has an actual personality. Sora! Instead of, instead of just force... Like, of course, the three main characters constantly force themselves into... Disney stories. It's it's literal fan fiction that you pay sixty dollars to play. Right. Uh but in the first game it was really charming because Sora Donald and Goofy are such outsiders that when they interjected themselves in the stories, it got weird and it was enjoyable. Right. So that kind of aspect is back a little bit. The dynamic between the three is back, which I think is great. The character writing for Sora Donald and Goofy are really good. Like, their actual interactions, they make fun of each other. It feels believable that they've been traveling together for fucking three games. Yeah, yeah. And that's great. But then as soon as, like, all these other side characters come up, I'm just pulling my hair out going, I want to die. Yeah, man. This story is so bad, and it's so poorly paced. Uh, oh, my God. There are eight Disney worlds, and they each can take up to three to four hours to complete. Some of them are fucking awful. Ugh. Uh, the Toy Story World one I thought was atrocious. Really? It's like the f the first two levels I think are like some of the worst. So the first two worlds you get are Toy Story and Tangled. Tangled is just a poor, poor, poor like retelling of the movie. Yeah. But they cut Sora, Donald, and Goofy out of it for good chunks of the game. Like they're forced out of the story and then, like, three big major scenes from that movie play out, like, in their entirety. Wow. And then Sora, Donald, and Goofy just show up going, wow, these lanterns are so nice. Oh, my God. It's, like, they're not even in the scene anymore. Like, they, they completely reenact the scene when Rapunzel first leaves her tower. And, like, she's going through, like, her emotions. Like, it's, it's beat for beat, the same jokes. But now Goofy and Sora and Donald are just awkwardly standing in scenes. <laughs> Leering? There's a, gra <laughs> there's a great one where, like, one of my favorite, like, gags about Rapunzel's hair. Like, Tangled? Good-ass fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. Watch it. That's what I've heard. Uh, Rapunzel rolls herself up. Like, she's going down a hill and she rolls herself up in her hair. And it's, like, it's really funny and cute. But that scene's happening, and then Goofy is just standing there. He's not adding anything to the scene. He's just watching her go down the hill. Just, wow. <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah. And most of these worlds are excruciatingly long. Yeah. Toy Story World, I think it had some strong writing. It had most of the voice cast, like... The the impersonators they had for Woody and Buzz were really good. Yeah. The the Tim Allen impersonator was like, whoa. Spot on. Whoa. This guy. Uh and then the guy who uh replaced Tom Hanks is his actual brother. Colin Hanks. D uh no, that's his son. Is Colin it? Hanks is his son. I thought Colin Hanks was his brother. Colin Hanks is his son. What? Yeah. No way. Yes. Thick, no way. Look it up on my hand. Oh my god. All right. I'm Colin gonna, Hanks I'm is up. his son. All right, all right. Well, so who's his brother then? Uh, I can't remember his name. It's like Fred Durst. <laughs> Fred Durst. Yes, it's the Fred Durst. <laughs> Limp Biscuit doing his best Tom Hanks impression. Uh, but like the writing in that world is funny. Like Rex is a part of it. There's an obvious gag to like how Nomura, the the director, felt about him being kicked off Final Fantasy 15. Uh huh. Like that that game is a fucking disaster. I don't blame Nomura anymore. After reading the backstory of what Square Enix did to him, yeah, and then for them to take that game away from him when they constantly pushed him to make other things, I'm like, yeah, I'd be fucking pissed too. And because of that, there's no Final Fantasy characters. Oh no. So you won't see Squall. You will not see Sephiroth. You can't fight Sephiroth. That sucks, man. That was such a rewarding that's fight in like, the first game. That's like the point of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's amazing. I want the Final Fantasy characters. Like, Nomura is so salty about 15 being taken away from him. He changed Riku's character design to look exactly like Noctis. 
His keyblade is a car key. Oh my gosh. Yes. He That's is. how salty he is about losing 15. Colin Hanks is Tom Hanks' son, by the way. Told you. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, told I didn't you. Know, I, I just didn't think, I didn't know that they were that far apart in age. Yeah. I, I, I had no idea. But Colin Hanks born in 1977, so wow. 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 Uh, but in any case, like, some of these levels I think are really fun. The Monsters, Inc. world I had a lot of fun with. Uh, the Frozen world can eat a dick. That world sucks. Ugh. That's the worst level of the entire, like, series uh they play the entirety of let it go oh my god the entirety. really and the it's See, funny too people have been finding this online there are watermarks in that animation because disney wanted that shit in there Oh my god. I was just going to say like like they like they didn't do that enough. Like they didn't squeeze that song out when that movie came out enough. There's there's a scene that's worse though in in the Frozen world. Oh my so god. So after after Let It Go happens, you fall down the mountain, you run into Anna like the other side characters. Uh-huh. And it starts playing Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Okay. But but then Anna starts talking over the vocals with no like they don't lower the music audio oh my god so she's you, com- she's competing with the song she's competing with the song <laughs> oh they're playing god. at the same volume and if i didn't have subtitles on i'd be like you wouldn't understand it what is this sora and goofy thanks for coming can, can I get you, you anything wanna to eat? you want to build a snowman? Uh, what do we... It will be really nice. What are we going to have to... Did you want to build a snowman? Did you talk to Every my sister? Every single time. How's she doing? She should I come back. I want to build a snowman. Oh. I really, really do. I'm, I'm scared. I really want to build a snowman. Why are you a talking duck? How about you? <laughs> That sounds so bad. That's the royalty-free version of Do You Want to Build hey, a Snowman? Hey, you're welcome. You just experienced some Kingdom Hearts 3, courtesy yeah. of Down and Greg. Uh, uh, but, uh, like, the worlds the worlds are either, like, they're either, like, okay, or they're, like, you need to go away. Uh-huh. Uh, San Francisco, the Big Hero 6 world, is just the city. And I, th- I was excited to do that. I'm like, oh, I'm going to see these big landscapes and, like, all these bright lights, and it's a boring, gray city. And you can choose whether you're there during the day or the night. Uh-huh. Daytime, there's no enemies that show up, so it's great when you're hunting for treasure. But it's fucking boring, and it's dull. At night, it's like, all right, it has some color. But then every ten steps, you run into a fucking Heartless. These areas are enormous. Some, like, like map areas can take you, like, a half an hour to traverse. Jeez. Between fighting things and just going through it. Oh, man. Uh... There are some things I like about the combat and some things I don't. You're going to spend 90% of it in the fucking air. Oh, okay. Like, to counterbalance the fact that the world is so big and you fight so many flying enemies, Sora can just kind of, like, go into the air. Uh Uh-huh. Like, he can pretty much fly. Pseudo fly, yeah, yeah. Like, like sort of glide and then... You do get a glide ability at the end of the game. Okay. I wish you had it during those fucking San San Francisco level. Uh Uh-huh. So you could traverse the fucking buildings. Yeah. But no! Annoying. It gives it to you at the very last level of the game. Annoying. And the very last level of the game is when you do all the Kingdom Hearts stuff, like the actual characters and story stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Like... There are cutscenes that happen at the end of every Disney World that are like, oh, remember, we have to kill Xehanort. You have to get the power of waking, Sora. Right, right. Just resetting your your, yeah. o- your overarching But all goal. the cutscenes are fucking boring and static and terrible. And then the final world happens, and it's a fucking mess. You fight, like, all the Organization 13 members. Uh-huh. Uh, you fight three at a time in a row. Uh, you have a random party member with you, and then there are like there's a cutscene every single time you knock out one of the members. So you'll be in a fight, you're against oh, three geez. of them. Jeez. You you beat one of them, a cutscene happens. And just then it goes back into the fight. That's horrible. And then you have to and it just rinse and repeat, do I, that. I can't stand that because of how much it messes with the pacing of it. It ruins the payoff of that thing. I'm like, why couldn't you make us fight these villains? earlier yeah that would make more sense but in any case uh like i found this game to be super okay it is it's better than all of the in-betweens two and three 
It's better than all of those, in my opinion. Uh, and it's way better than Chain of Memories. That game is the worst of the bunch. They're, or Dream Drop Distance. They're, they're both awful. They're, yeah. Ugh. This game series has so many fucking terrible games. Jeez. Uh, this game is a mess. Unless you're a diehard Kingdom Hearts fan, you already own this. And if you're not, then stay away from it because it's not great. Mm. It's beautiful to look at sometimes. Sure. But, like, from an outside, if you're an outsider, no. It just sounds like. Absolutely not. It just sounds like you have to work way too hard to stay on track with the story of this game and to enjoy any the pacing kind of is horrible any it's kind of so payoff bad. at the end so that's what it sounds like to me like you can go for hours just doing gameplay and then an- and then two hours of cutscenes or vice versa like you'll start a world and then all you're doing is cutscenes that's what olympus was yeah the very first level you do it's just like non-stop cutscene after cutscene after cutscene after cutscene then you fight something and then more fucking cutscenes. Jeez. It's aggravating. Uh, like, the, the Keyblade forms are cool. I think it's cool that you can use any Keyblade in the game. Like, in the old games, as soon as you went to a new world and you got a new Keyblade, you're equipping that. You're, yeah. not, you're not using any other weapon. Right. Like, there's, there's no point. It right. has better stats and no way. In this game, uh, you have a Keyblade Forge, and you can basically synthesize with all of your Keyblades and mm-hmm. make them all progressively more and more powerful. So you can finish the game with the standard Keyblade, which I think is dope. Too bad that I think the rest of the gameplay is really fucking monotonous. Yeah. Like, you have these reaction commands that pop up, not like how they did in 2, where like there's a specific one for every like Heartless you fight or boss fight. This time around, it's... Like, you do super attacks after you attack long enough. Like, with certain Keyblades, they turn into new weapons. Like, the Toy Story Keyblade turns into a giant hammer. And then, if you keep attacking with that, it turns into a drill. And then you can do a big finisher move. Oh, okay. Uh, A little Battletoads element to it, sounds like. A little bit. (laughs) And on paper, that sounds really cool, but it makes the game so fucking easy. Oh. Like, once once you find your three Keyblades that you're going to stick with, yeah. you don't need to do anything else. I use the the main Keyblade, like the Kingdom Key, the Pirates of the Caribbean one, and the Monsters, Inc. one, and I just did not feel any need to use any other Keyblade. Mm. You can cycle through them in battle, which is dope, but then there are these stupid, like, amusement park summon abilities that oh. just randomly show up. Like, sometimes you'll see a Heartless that has, like, a green lock on it. Uh-huh. If you attack it, you can use a Disney park, like, a Disney World Park uh, amusement park ride attack. So, like, you have a pirate ship and mad teacups, and they're long, they're not useful, they're obnoxious, and they use the same button as opening treasure chests. Oh. So, if you're trying to open treasure and you have that icon up, whoops. Yikes. That sounds really frustrating. It's, this game is frustrating as hell. Like, Man. it's not the worst game, too, but I have so many gripes with it. There are yeah. way too many gripes than praising. Right, right, right. So overall, if you when after you do the math, it comes out in the negative just because there's too many. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, think, there, I think there's one moment in the entire game where I was like, awesome. There's, it's the very last boss fight. Sora's like, oh, I'm going to fight this guy alone. Don't worry about it. He starts walking, and then Donald and Goofy just walk right alongside him, and they quote the first game. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh. Right. Uh, I'm like, you know what? That that got me. Yeah. You got me. It's nice. And then this clusterfuck boss fight happens. Uh-huh. Man. So there's there are genuine payoffs woven into it, but it's there's a lot of garbage yes. around it. Kyrie is still garbage. Okay. Okay. She's still straight up garbage. Right. She has no character arc. She has no redemption. Right. She's turned into another damsel in distress. Right, right. Again. That's that's what I that's what everything I've read about the game is just this that game Kyrie is, is, is just, so bad at writing the female characters. Yeah, she just breathes and like Sora just runs halfway across uh, the galaxy. Kyrie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just nuts. Sora. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but uh Okay. Okay. So Kingdom Hearts three, frustrating. I give it a pe- I say skip it right if you're not a diehard if you haven't played all the games leading up to this absolutely already, not don't absolutely do it. not if okay. you're if you're like a diehard fan of the series i think you'll enjoy it 
Uh, but I don't think it's anywhere near as strong as one and two. Gotcha. Okay. Well, there, there you have it with Kingdom Hearts three. And uh, for me, I say Star is Born. It is, uh, it is worth checking out. It's worth your time, especially like you know, it's it's around Valentine's Day. You know, like right now when we're recording this, it's nearby it. And if you got a date night or something, Star is Born is definitely in there. Or you can listen to these two losers. You can sarcasm. <laughs> Fuck you, freak. Some people like us, okay? Are you going to eat this Chinese food? Man, you fucking rambled about... <laughs> I, I, ate, I ate plenty of the beef and broccoli. And I'll have you know I'm saving a bunch of this for the rest of this week. You brought a feast, man. I'm not just going to like burn through all this right now. We've got... I am. We've got several yeah. days oh, left. Oh, I am. Oh. This over here, though, this is mine, definitely. I'm saving this for like three or four days. I will definitely have the Peking Duck. Oh, dude, I want that. I bought it for me. I'm going to go in here and have some of this uh, nice uh, orange mind. chicken. Oh, <laughs> somebody orange chicken, man. What are we You're talking about here? You disgust me. <laughs> oh, come on, ew. All right. Listen, uh, well, let's Be take... Be gone. <laughs> Be gone. Oh, Vanish oh, from oh, this oh, box car. Oh, Whoa. What did you do? Freak, did you just like open up a dimensional rift? Like, what the hell? I sent him into the subspace emissary. I have abilities to go there whenever I please. What? You're telling us this now? Freak, this is I thought you knew. This is I'm great one news. with the spirits. Dude, we're going to have to make use of that. I actually want to go to this subspace emissary. Can you send me too? Very well. Let us go. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, like we said, Kingdom Hearts 3 and uh, Star is... Kingdom Hearts 3 Avoid. Star is Born. Check it out. All, All right, right, guys. Talk next week. Catch you on the flip side. All right. Here we go. All right. Are you ready? Now let us hold hands. Okay. And chant the magic chant. Uka chaka, uka chaka, uka, uka, uka chaka. Uka chaka, uka chaka, uka, uka, uka chaka, uka chaka. Wow, the great blackness. I can't even see my hand. What are you doing on me, Lord? Uh, you guys want to do something with me? I'm glad to see you. Damn it! What you just heard was a fantasy. A fiction cooked up for your amusement and the catharsis of the hosts. Please have mercy on them.